Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, we're going to talk about Cold Wars and how it could make you a better programmer by practicing solving problems. Now, there's other websites like Lead Code where you could learn the same thing. Well, not really the same thing. The issue with Lead Code that I have is that if you're just a beginner, it'll be almost impossible for you guys to solve any of those problems. So that is why if you're just starting out and you want to practice solving problems through programming, Cold Wars is your best option. So let's jump in here and check it out how using Cold Wars is going to help us get better at programming. Now, by the way, before we continue, I want to make a series where we start from the beginning, going from the beginning and solving beginner programming problems in Cold Wars and slowly working towards the advanced problems. So if this is something that interests you, subscribe to the channel. My name is Paul and I talk about switching careers into web development late in life. So let's jump into the video and get started here. All right, guys, here we are in Google. And what you want to do is you could Google Cold Wars. And if you Google, it's going to come in here and you could click here. And now, since I'm already logged in, you'll get this logged in screen. But if you just started out, if you were to if you were to go into it without logging in first, like for instance, like I'm going to do here, you're going to see that what it's going to do is going to open up a screen where you ask you to pick the language that you want and let's look for JavaScript because this is what we do. And it's going to ask you to solve a simple problem. Now this problem is like super simple, not too much to worry about. So all this is missing is a return here. And then when we submit, boom, you're all set. And then it passes and allows you to create your username and login. Since I'm already logged in, I'm just going to go back to my screen here. Now, once you get into Cold Wars, you're going to have your katas. And the cool thing about katas is that kind of like white belts in martial arts, start with yellow belt, blue belt, purple belt, sometimes brown belt and black belt. Here we have white, yellow, blue, and purple. Everything in white, it's more beginner friendly. Getting to yellow, it starts to become more intimate immediate. Once you get to blue and purple, it's more advanced challenges. If I were to break it down in that sense. So we're going to start in this series from very beginning. So you could click on eight and it's going to show you different questions that you have here. And we're going to start with this simple one called converting Boolean values to string. Yes or no. What we're going to do, we're going to click here on JavaScript and it's going to open up this window. As you could see here, we have our function that they started for us and what it takes, it takes Boolean arguments. So it's either going to be true or false. And if it's true, we want to return a string yes. And if it's false, we want to return a string no. So basically, if you're just starting out and you're not sure what to do, kind of write it out. We want something to happen and then return yes. And if it's something else happens, then return no. So this is going to really sound familiar because it sounds like we want to use if or else statement. So we could go to trusty Google and look up if and else JavaScript. Now you have the W3 example, which is really cool and really nice. And you could kind of see the example here. But what I recommend is starting to get into a habit of learning through development mozilla.org, which is a much more in-depth documentation when it comes to JavaScript in general. So I really like it here. So as you could see here, we have our function, which has a result, and then they have an if and else statement. The result is undefined right now. And if something is true, we're going to set result to positive. If something is false, then we're going to set it not positive. And this is where they're doing the test case for true and false. And then what they're doing at the end is returning that result. So we could use this to solve our problem. Now, before we jump into it, I just want to show you how this works. Once you're here and you write your code here, you run your test right now, because we didn't write any code here, we're definitely going to fail the test. So definitely do not attempt the problem here until you test a couple of times, make sure that you're passing the initial test. And then you could click attempt to either get pass or fail. Now, what I like to do when I practice coding is I like to use something called run.js that you could have basically running on your computer locally and allows you to test code out. So let me switch there so you could take a look here. So I have run.js open and basically I'm just gonna paste that basic 
function that they started. So we know that we take a Boolean and we want to test it. So we know that we could create a const here. Well, actually it's not going to be a const because it's going to change called result. And this is where we're going to store our result. Right now it is undefined. Some people will initialize it to an empty string, but it's not necessary and we could just have it as undefined. It's there, but it's undefined. Now we're going to create our basic if statement. And when you pass a Boolean here, if it's true, you know, we don't have to test it bool equals true, right? Because the boolean, it's either true or false. So if it's true, we want to return something. And if it's not true else, we want to return something else. So here, if the result is true, we want to set the result to yes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set it to yes. And if the result is not true, we want to set it to no. And at the end, what we want to do is we want to return the result. All right, so this should work. So let's give it a test here. We're going to, on the bottom here, do bool to word. And we're going to call it with true. And I guess it would help if I spell it right. And this is why I like working here because you could see your errors here. So as you could see, return is misspelled, return. And that was an issue. And that's why I like using it here because you see the errors that pop up here. Good, we tested true, we got yes. So let's now run the test for equals false. And I'm terrible at typing, so I mistype a lot as you could see, and that's okay. So look, it works. We return yes and no. So let's kind of review the example here really quickly. So we create a function where we passed an argument, we had a variable that's undefined and we basically tested. If it's true, we set our variable to yes. If it's false, we set the variable to no and then we return the result. Another way we could do this is to actually eliminate the result and literally just return yes or no. And we're going to get the same answer. Notice how this works. Now what's cool about this, this actually brings up another point. There's a shortened version of if else statement and it's called a ternary operator. So here we see an example of ternary operator and basically what this allows us to do is to shorten our if else statement into one line. So here we do our test case. If this evaluates to true, then we're going to return this. Else, if it's false, we're going to return this. So in our case, if this is true, we want to return yes. And if this is false, we want to return no. So let's go into our code and do the same thing here. So here we are. So now we could shorten this by a lot. We could literally get rid of this code or what I'll do is I'll just refactor it. So we're going to see here if Boolean, and we don't need those brackets actually. If Boolean, that means if it's true, we want to return yes. And if it's not true, we want to return no. And this is basically what the ternary operator does. It allows us to nice and easily write this code. Now we want to make sure that we put return here to make it easier. And as you could see, we get the same answers. Now, if you know arrow functions, this allows us to do the same thing, just much more cleaner. We could actually write it in one line. But before I do that, I just want to show you another way that you might see this written. Some people like to write two if statements. So if bull return yes, and then if bull is not true and they use the not operator, we want to return no. And this also works as you could see here. And I just want to show you because sometimes you might see people write their if statements like this instead of doing if else if else if else. So this is another way of writing. But let's come back to our previous example where we're going to make it as short as possible. And instead of having a regular function declaration, we're going to have a arrow function expression. Now, if you're not familiar with arrow functions, they allow us to have an implicit return. So instead of everything having written the way we had it before, we could literally write it on one line and we get the same answer. So if true, return yes, else return no. So notice how this is much more cleaner and concise. So let's take this example and go back to our original code here and try it out here. All right, guys, so now let's paste our code in here, the one that we wrote. And now what we could do, we could run a test. And if everything goes well, we see everything green here. Let's do another test just in case. And they 
but here you are we have it and once you're happy you could hit attempt and then when you see all green you know you did great and you know you passed the test so now what you could do is submit and once it submits your solution, you're actually gonna see how other people solve their issues. So you could see that they use the regular function with a ternary, then you see here they use if and else with return statement. This is the example that we did, which was very nice, but you could see other examples. So when you're starting out to code, and by the way, here's another example where they use uh, switch statement, uh, which in this case is overkill in this situation here. But you know what? We did it. We solved our first question. Now, what I want to say to you guys is that when you're starting out learning to code, it's very easy to try to bite off more than you can chew. So that's why I like Cold Wars because it allows you to start nice and easy simply from the very beginning and learn the basics. And as you saw me, don't be shy going to Google and looking up stuff and checking out a Mozilla's developer website and seeing code examples to help you learn new things that you may not know. And over time, as you get better at solving some of these easier challenges like we did today, you're gonna move on to more intermediate ones and eventually gonna do more advanced ones. And as you become a better programmer, sites like Lead Code become more important where you could start to tackle some of those harder problems. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and again, like, share, and subscribe if this is something that interests you. With that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time.